Oh, <laughs> this lighting is divine. Oh, uh, well, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go fuck myself then. Just gonna hold my hand up like this until the sun decides to stop casting magical rays of summertime sweetness on my face. Well, there's nothing I hate more than purple eyeshadow, so let's review the Norvina palette. Well, you know what? This is just nature, so I don't know what to say. Oh, it's a little better if I go like this and get really close to the camera, which is okay anyways. I'm gonna put on some eye primer, which I normally do. My eyebrows are the worst lately. I don't know what the problem is. I had a little realization recently. Sometimes, I think I end up not liking palettes as much as I would because I'm trying to utilize them in the way that you guys would want me to. Not necessarily like you, but the general internet that wants to be upsetting in my comments. If I bought this Norvina palette as a consumer, I'd probably really like it. And not that I don't like it. We haven't tried it yet. We're trying it together here today. I'd probably really like it because I'm seeing a lot of shimmery, beautiful colors that I'd probably like. Ultimately, I would just avoid using those two purpley blue shades that are going to look absolutely horrific on me. And I would probably be like, this is nice. But sometimes I think because I'm trying to appease people, I end up using the palette in a different way than I would normally. I, I almost like it less because of that. So here's how I've decided to combat that in case you were wondering. I'm gonna do one look how you bitches want me to do it and I'm gonna do one look using the shades that I would want to use aka neutral. It's going to be beautiful. Okay again we're just gonna pretend that this sunshine thing isn't happening so I'll focus on this eye. Better eyebrow anyways. I'm gonna start by using this color soul. Fun fact, my least favorite color is periwinkle. I'm just taking that periwinkle on a little fluffy blending brush. This is from Zoeva, it's called 224. And I'm bringing that into my outer corner and crease. I'm gonna focus mostly on this eye. Actually, I'll just do this eye on camera so that you guys can see because this lighting on the other side is a little fucked up. Then I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm gonna buff over top to get a little bit of a gradation. Ooh, maybe I wanna use that color love. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. I'm gonna take this color, it's pink, and I'm gonna take that on a Volair E02 brush and I'm gonna bring, oh, that was a little bit more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be, that's all right. I'm gonna bring that into my crease to help blend out that periwinkle supreme color. Just taking a little bit more of that color sole and then taking my brush that I applied my pink with. Oh, wow. Listen, Norvina. I love Anastasia's brand in general. I'm taking the color Passion. It's like a plum color. You guys will see it when it's on. I love, I love the Anastasia brand, I really do. And I think a lot of the times they come out with really kind of like cool and more unique shades in their palettes. However, just out of curiosity, do any of you guys sometimes feel like colors that seem like they would have no problem blending together from the Anastasia palettes? you go to blend and then you're like, oh, um, <laughs> did I just lose my ability to do makeup or is this just like super, super patchy and weird? Like, I feel like sometimes, and, and honestly, I had this problem sometimes with modern Renaissance where colors that seemed like they should have no problem ended up getting really muddy for some reason. And it's just strange. It's a weird thing that I feel like happens to me almost exclusively with Anastasia's palettes. I don't know, man. It's just how I feel. Like, even like that pink, I feel like that pink is completely gone. Whereas when I first put it down, I was like, oh, this is nothing but pink. I'm gonna take the color Drama right there. It's kind of like a sparkly plum type situation. And I'm gonna pack, I just tasted that fallout. I'm gonna pack that on my outer corner. I'm going to take Soul, and I'm gonna put Soul on my inner corner, creating a little bit of a you know, a halo eye. Oh, wait, oh. Maybe a, maybe that looks like a bruise. I, oh, hmm, okay. 
Let's just see, let's just see how this goes. Uh, I'm gonna take the color Celestial because I feel like that's very much not a bruisey color. And I'm gonna put that on my lid. Oh, this looks so bad. I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and wet my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus. I'm picking up a little bit more of that color Celestial. Cele celestial? Oh no, oh God. I am <laughs> horrified. This is so weird. I feel like, okay, I'm not sure how much you're gonna be able to see this, but I'm gonna try and point it out. See right here? It seems like it's going kind of dark and like I can't seem to blend those colors together. Like it just seems like there's like a perfect border where like this eyeshadow is and soul is. And then over here, I feel like it got so muddy so fast, even though those colors are like nowhere near being close to each other. So it's not like you're losing that depth due to the fact that the colors are so similar. You know what I mean? Like I feel like those colors are all really different from each other and it should have created this really nice like gradient, but this, and then Celestial, I feel like it applied really patchy when I applied it with a, a clean brush, a dry brush. And then I feel like I wet my brush and I still feel like it's not really applying here. It's not really applying here. And then like there's some intenseness throughout the center. I don't know, man. It's like it won't stick over top of those other colors. Maybe I should just go fuck myself. <laughs> Let me take a little bit of the color Wild Child. It's like a pink, it's like a shimmery pink. And I'm gonna, okay. I'm taking that down. Let me just consider this for a second. Let me just consider my options. I'm gonna pick up a bunch of love, that pink color, and I'm gonna take it right into my crease and bringing it kind of upwards. The fallout is like another story, okay? We're gonna deal with that in a little bit. Now I'm gonna take the color Passion, which is that matte kind of like reddy plum color. And I'm gonna put some more of that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this color called Base. It's just like a matte kind of like bone white color. And I'm bringing that under. the brow bone. I'm gonna take a little bit of that color soul again, and I'm gonna try and just really gently, just take a tiny, tiny little bit. I'm tapping off almost all of my excess, and I'm gonna try and just really gently kind of tap it on instead of trying to like buff it and blend it. So I'm taking a little bit of that on the inner and the outer corners. Like you can see I'm not even like going back and forth. I'm literally just tapping, tapping, tapping it on. Then I'm gonna take more of Wild Child. Put that down the center. I'm gonna actually wet my brush and see if I can get a little bit more out of that color Wild Child because I really like the iridescence to it when I swatch it on my hand. It's a really, really pretty and quite unique color actually. Okay, I don't feel like I'm getting that much out of it. I'm gonna take that color Passion, which again is that kind of like reddy plum color, and I'm gonna bring that right under my lower lash line. Take my little brush with the color Soul, and sort of go over top of that. I'm gonna keep that a little tighter to the lower lash line than I normally would, just because I don't want it to give that like bruised appearance. Then I'm gonna take that color Wild Child, and I'm gonna put it on our inner corner I'm also gonna take a little bit of the color Dreamer. That's this kind of like champagne-y color there. And I'm just going to dot that almost over top of that Wild Child. I'm just gonna pop on some mascara. I feel like so far, like if this was the only look I had done with this palette, I feel like it'd be pretty easy for me to say I don't like this palette. Like, I feel like I, first of all, it's just not colors I gravitate towards. So just like personal opinion, I, wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards it that much. But the second thing is that I felt like 
yeah, like colors that I just wouldn't see having a problem blending into each other just turned muddy so fast that I feel like I'd be, it's almost like it would be a palette that like, if I knew I had to be somewhere in a certain amount of time, I wouldn't reach for it because I know that it's probably gonna give me problems. It's, it's honestly like what subculture ended up being because as much as I still really love that palette and the concept of that palette, it is a little bit more finicky to work with. So it's just, it's just essentially not foolproof. And to me, more and more, I'm kind of gravitating towards makeup that is more foolproof and makeup that is a little bit like easier to kind of apply without having to think basically. And this to me is not that so far. I'm not going to do my other eye because I'm lazy, but I am going to do a second look. I'm gonna start with the color Incense. Looks lovely, super neutral, beautiful, gorgeous. Can't wait to experience it on my eyes. Okay, I'm taking that on a Little Smith 232 brush. Ooh, very powdery, okay. I'm going to bring that into my outer corner and my crease. Once I have like a good amount of that down, I'm just taking a clean blending brush and buffing over. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of that color, oh, eccentric, oh fuck, it's right there. <laughs> and I'm gonna just take that on my bigger blending brush and just really, really gently swipe that over, over the, good God, it's been a moment since I've, since I've been a moment since I've filmed. Okay, I'm taking that very gently and lightly, I'm sweeping that over the outer edges of that color we just laid down. I just wanted to add a little bit more warmth and honestly, this color's beautiful. It is stunning. I'm loving every minute of it. Even just that color, I feel like washed all over the lid. Ooh. See, these are the things that excite me. Brown. I'm gonna take that same color eccentric on a smaller blending brush. I'm gonna bring it underneath my lower lash line. Then same thing, I'm just gonna take my big blending brush, go over everything. I can take that color incense on a slightly smaller brush and I'm gonna go closer to my lash line. I'm just having those two brown shadows mixed kind of just onto more of like the center of the lid. I'm gonna take the color ro rose gold right here and I'm just going to apply that across my lid. Oh. I'm gonna take that on my finger, which gives me a little bit more of that look, but I was kind of hoping for some more intensity. Lots of fallout on this guy as well. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go into the color, what do I wanna try here? Maybe I'll try this color Summer and I'll pat some of that right down the center of the lid as well. I have a little bit more rose gold on my brush and I'm kind of tapping that on either side, almost like a halo eye. When I'm doing two different shimmers, I like to put one shimmer on either side of my flat brush so that I can kind of quickly alternate between the two because instead of like swiping back and forth to blend my shimmers, I just kind of pat. So I know that I have my rose gold on my one side and then that color summer on the other side. So I can just kind of quickly go back and forth between the two to blend those two colors together. You know what I mean? A lot of people were asking me what my initial thoughts were on the Norvina palette. <sighs> I'll be frank. Again, I love Anastasia, I love Norvina. I think that they come out with such beautiful palettes that oftentimes are really kind of unique. Like a lot of the times they're on trend, but there's still something a little bit different about them that makes them kind of like Anastasia, you know? And so, yeah, you could say I have a little bit of a hard on for ABH, okay? Because of this extreme affection, I feel, I was a little bit disappointed when I saw this palette because I almost feel like if I was to ask any of you to like look at a picture of Norvina and then make me a palette based off of her, I feel like this is exactly what most people would come up with. And so in a way, yes, very on brand. But I feel like that's kind of the opposite of what Norvina typically 
gives us, you know what I mean? Like I feel like she's always doing something that's a little bit more inventive, a little bit crazier, a little bit more unique. And so I kind of thought that this is what people were going to expect. And then she was gonna like blow us out of the water with something that was like still really on brand, but something that was so much more inventive and so much more like, oh, I would never think of that. And I just didn't get that from this palette. I'm just adding Dreamer to the inner corner. I just didn't get that from this palette. I felt like it was really, I don't know, just kind of like lackluster in my opinion. Okay, let's zoom out and I'll tell you guys my thoughts. I'm gonna tuck my hair behind my ears so I look more like a scholar. And now I'm gonna tell you my thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Okay, listen. Norvina. <laughs> I don't know, man. Here's the thing. I think if these are colors that really appeal to you, you're probably going to like this palette. It's not difficult to come up with color combinations from, which is always a nice thing. As I've mentioned in so many of my reviews, I think an important part of a palette is being able to look at it and say, okay, I know how I would use this color. Like there's nothing that you are looking at and left feeling like, how would I possibly incorporate that into a look? I feel like everything in here is pretty easily cohesive. It seems really obvious what kind of pairings you could do. I felt like a lot of the shimmers on the top were really, really soft, which swatched absolutely beautifully, but I'm, I'm sometimes left wondering if brands are more concerned about making sure that the product swatches beautifully versus actually working properly on the eyes or wherever it's meant to be put. Like seriously, so many of these swatch absolutely stunning on the skin. Like they just take one swipe and they are like full pigmentation, really, really beautiful texture, like this, this incredible nuance to the color. But then I felt like all of them were kind of lackluster on the eye, which I was really surprised by because they swatched so beautifully and looked so intense and so gorgeous. So I was left being kind of disappointed with those shimmers, which honestly, when when I was looking at this palette, I was like, okay, well, I fucking hate purples just as a personal preference, but I'm probably going to end up getting a lot of use out of this palette because of all of these beautiful, like neutral shimmer colors. I also noticed that the mattes varied quite a bit. Um, Incense, for instance, was really, really soft and powdery um, and kind of like kicked up a lot of product like we were seeing in Subculture when everyone was doing those crazy reviews, like getting to the bottom of the pan in two seconds. Whereas Eccentric was so much harder and it seemed like it wasn't nearly as powdery kind of thing. I also feel like something I've been noticing out of the uh, Anastasia formulas recently is that I'm often surprised by how dark colors appear on my lid versus how they look in the pan. Incense was one of those ones for me I was kind of surprised by. I felt like when I when I put it on my lid, it was way darker than I thought it was gonna be. I feel like eccentric and incense are almost the same um, like deepness level, but obviously they're different tones. But I didn't feel like incense was that much darker, but it ended up looking so much darker on my lid um, than eccentric did. Same thing with rose gold. I felt like rose gold almost had like a really deep base to it. It. it looked quite a bit darker on my lid than I was expecting it to. It looked almost a lot more smoky, which could be good or bad depending on what kind of look you're going for. Basically, it just wasn't what I was expecting. And that's something I've been noticing out of Anastasia's shadows lately is the, the muddiness problem I was talking about where like I'm blending colors that seem like they should be no problem blending together and then they look super muddy and patchy on the lid. And then a lot of the shadows ending up looking a lot darker than I thought they would be. So overall, I mean, I don't think it's like an unreasonably difficult formula to use. It's something that you would probably have to think about a little bit more, like I mentioned. Personally, I feel like I have a hard time recommending this one. I was just a little bit kind of let down. I didn't feel like the shadows performed on the eye the way that they did when they were swatched, and I felt like I was having that muddiness issue, which I just wouldn't want to have to sit there and like worry about that when I was using a palette. Let me know if you guys have picked up this palette. Let me know if you guys like it, don't like it. What are your feelings. I'll link everything I used. Mm, I used one palette. Probably I don't need to link that, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the percentage of your sale anyway. It's, it's going to be linked below. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace out.